Good morning, everybody. Good morning. For those that don't know, my name is Stuart Schlossman, president and founder of MS Views and News, and we welcome you to a partnered program with MS Views and News and Neuroscience Centers of Florida Foundation. This is a first for both of us, and I want to welcome and thank Neuroscience Centers of Florida Foundation for doing this, and Tamara is going to come up, Tamara Robinette. For those that don't know, she's going to come up here right now and have a few words with you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, first order of business, I would like to say thank you to Stu and to MS Views and News and their incredible staff for collaborating with us on this great program that we're very excited to bring to you. Um, it's called Treatment Options and Adaptive Exercise in Multiple Sclerosis, um, made possible by a grant from Genzyme. Now, for those of you who do not know, Neuroscience Center is a Florida foundation, uh, short version NSCFF. We're a nonprofit organization, just like MS Views and News, established to improve healthcare delivery and address the unmet needs of those afflicted by chronic neurodegenerative disease, like multiple sclerosis, also Alzheimer's, um, Parkinson's, and um, stroke. We work on stroke research as well. So. Uh, our comprehensive team approach to care is poised to answer to the patient's medical and non-medical needs. This is why Jennifer Falk will be speaking um, today on the benefits of exercise. Um, we want to help people get disease management, diagnosis, support services, and education, which is very important, so that patients and their caregivers can stay at home, stay at work, stay out of the hospital, and enjoy their quality of life. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tamara. You know, I forgot to tell you all. I mean, Tamara reminded me as she's talking, and yes, I said I'm a little tired, but MS Views and News, our purpose, our mission, is to provide education, information, and resources for everybody affected by MS, not just the patients, but the caregivers as well, which is why we often try to do a lot with the caregivers. Also, we feel it's very important for healthcare providers all around the world to learn more about MS, because not all of they know about multiple sclerosis. So this is what we do. So going forward now, today we have a three-speaker program. First, we're going to have Jennifer Falk, as was just mentioned, and Jennifer will speak for about 40 minutes, and with then we'll do Q&A. And then we're going to have Jeffrey Siegel. It's like the three J's program, if you see the names. All right. Then we're going to have Jeffrey Siegel, and Jeffrey Siegel will do about the same, and again, you'll ask him questions during the program if needed. And then the last speaker of the day, which you all are going to be really, really um, welcome that you came to this program to hear Jack Burks, neurologist, and Jack Burks, for those of you that don't know, is the founder of the Rocky Mountain MS Center in Colorado. So we have a lot to be thankful for that he is here to speak with you all today. So without any further ado, let's begin. Jennifer, come on up. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Hi. My name is Jennifer Falk, and I am a social worker. I am the Social Work Programs Coordinator at Neuroscience Centers of Florida Foundation. And uh, just to give you a little history about me, um, I graduated from New York University. I hold my master's degree in social work. And I've spent my career working with people who have chronic diseases or critical illness. So I've spent many years in the hospital system. And um, I've been able to focus uh, my social work now through NSCFF uh, specifically to the MS population. And this has been an incredible um, experience and, and it continues and we've been able to reach a lot of people. Uh, Neuroscience Centers of Florida Foundation was able to recognize that there was a need in South Florida uh, for education and for a social worker, for supportive services, uh, for guidance, for um, connection to different uh, community resources. So uh, that's what I do. And then the other part of what I do is I create wellness programs for people living with MS, and we put it together in our community. Uh, we have right now established uh, an adaptive yoga class. We also have a dance therapy program that we run, and we've done art therapy. 
And these things have been real beneficial. I know we have many people who have participated that are here today that really love it. And um, so I'm not a physical therapist, I'm not an expert in exercise, but I have seen firsthand the benefits that these kinds of activities have for people living with MS. So um, let's get started. Um, just the outline for today, uh, we're gonna look at the benefits of exercise. We're going to look at cognitive reserve and different types of exercise, okay? So the three major benefits and goals of exercise is that you wanna maintain your general health. You wanna stay where you're at and, and keep your health well to maximize your current functioning. So you wanna stay where you are and to improve on your level of functioning and where you're at and to protect your brain for the future. And there is a, a strong connection between um, brain wellness and exercise and doing extracurricular activities. Um, so I didn't want to make a laundry list for you, but I made a laundry list for you because there's just so many benefits. And I really want you guys to realize uh, how, how much this can uh, affect your daily health. Um, so continued benefits of exercise. Um, I have a little thing here. Create opportunities for socializing. And you can ask anybody uh, in, in our groups that are participating now. Part of it is just the wonderful camaraderie and friendships that have developed in, in, in our classes. And it's a wonderful way, if you're able to get out of the house and get to a class every week, to meet other people. It doesn't have to necessarily be people with MS, but just the activity and getting out and socializing, there's a tremendous benefit to that. Okay, so you're improving your quality of life, you're increasing your strength, you're decreasing levels of depression, and there's research that you can, you can Google that and you can find great research and, and statistics that show that uh, levels of depression do decrease with increased levels of exercise. Okay, improved sleep improves posture, uh, your appetite is improved, uh, improved mobility and flexibility, very important for MS because of the issues with spasticity. You know, anything that you can do to stretch and um, increase your flexibility is going to help, okay? So, and decrease spasticity. Um, you know, this is a, a problem with MS, your spasticity and the tightening, the painful tightening of the muscle. So if you're doing stretching exercises or any kind of Tai Chi or yoga, you're gonna help that, okay? You're going to increase energy, which helps with fatigue, improved mood, improved fitness level. Uh, your mental skills can be sharpened with exercise and help maintain independence and of course, weight loss. So that always is a good thing. Okay, and this is a picture of our adaptive yoga class. This is some of our crew uh, that we took a picture of that day. And again, I show you this picture because it really has brought people together, not only around exercise, but has created a tremendous uh, bond and friendship over exercise uh, for MS. So it's really something uh, great to be involved in. Has anybody ever heard of cognitive reserve? Has anyone heard of that term? Okay, so cognitive reserve is, is a really interesting theory, and there's been a lot of research on cognitive reserve. It originally started uh, with Alzheimer's patients and looking at connections with neurons in the brain and how uh, the brain um, either continues to, to do well or kind of degenerate. And they've moved cognitive reserve research into MS, and also you can look up this this in, uh, online and see a lot of good research on it. Um, so cognitive reserve is the capacity of the brain to cope with an injury. So when you hear the word injury, you think, oh my goodness, like getting hit in the head or God forbid you have a car accident. But if you think about MS and you think about the way it works, um, you have myelin loss, you have um, the development of a lesion, and that really is, is like an injury to the brain, right? So cognitive reserve is the concept of by doing things like exercise and extracurricular activities, you're creating connections in the brain outside of that injury. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, you could picture your brain and you can picture yourself driving down a road into a city and the city is your, in your brain, okay? So you're driving down this road and there's only one road to the city, okay? And 
there's a big storm, something happens, there's an accident, and there's trees down, and there's power lines down, and you can't continue down that road. The road is blocked, and you can't get into the city. So cognitive reserve, it is stating that the use of exercise creates other roads off that road. So if you hit that block, say you hit that lesion or that flare up, so you can take your car and go down other roads, okay? So it's making other connections in your brain between neurons, okay? So that is the idea, and there has been a lot of research and a lot of evidence that exercise improves that. So you're making new connections, you're making new pathways in your brain. Sure. Well, sure. I mean, do you want to hold questions till, till the end? Or, okay, thanks. Okay, so how do you start exercising? Um, of course, you always want to speak to your physician before you start a program. Uh, your physician knows you best. Uh, your physician knows your strengths and weaknesses. They may recommend uh, some a specific type of exercise. Uh, they may recommend avoiding something like weights or avoiding a specific type of exercise. So you want to confer with your physician first. Um, and you might see things that say physiotherapist or physical therapist. These are kind of hand in hand, okay? I, I did a lot of research for this presentation for you guys, and I saw um, physical therapy centers, or you'll see something like a physiotherapy center. It seems to be the same thing. Physical therapists are there to work with you. I do recommend looking for a physiotherapist or physical therapist center that has an aquatic center inside of it. Some of them do. Um, and that is a true benefit, because then you're going to get the physical therapist in the pool with you, working with you in the water. And that's a great thing. Um, so the other thing I wanted to share with you is that many insurance plans do not need a referral for physical therapy. You can just begin. Um, and. There's a lot of mystery, and I, ha I speak with a lot of patients that say, I, I don't know, I don't know if it's covered, and there's a really easy way to figure out. You just need to call your insurance company and say, how much physical therapy am I entitled to a year? What do I need to do to get physical therapy? Do I need a prescription from my doctor? How many sessions can I go to? So these are the kind of questions that'll just get you set up. And then there's other insurance plans that you don't even need. Uh, a, a referral. You can go straight to a physical therapist and begin, but it's just a phone call. Call your plan and see what you're covered for. And then pick a good place, a place that is reputable and preferably a place that has good equipment and uh, the aquatic center in it. Okay. Um, so this is really interesting. I like this. Interrelated symptoms of MS. So the cycle, the cycle of, of symptoms. Okay. So you look here, you start, you have increased fatigue and depression. Uh, so with MS, a show of hands, how many people have, have experienced MS fatigue? Oh, well, wow. so yeah, we've got the whole, like pretty much the whole room, right? So, and then the cycle begins, and I think you could probably relate to this. So you, you have increased fatigue and, it's, and you have depression. So of course, you, you don't feel like exercising, right? So you're not gonna exercise. And then here your cycle. So then you have increased spasticity. Uh, your muscles are getting tight because you're not moving a lot. So then you have those, those terrible cramps in the back of your leg and, you know, so and an increased constipation and possible increased bladder issues. So what's that going to do is kind of keep you up all night because you're using the bathroom all night, right? And then here we go again and now you're exhausted in the morning and so here's this cycle. And this can be really... Um, very frustrating, this can really feel very disempowering. But there, I, I like that exercise is something that you can do to empower yourself in this cycle and, and break this cycle. So this is something that you have control over. You have control over this disease. So you have control by your medication choices, you have control by your lifestyle choices, and you have control by, by opting to do exercise. So you can throw a bit of a monkey wrench in this bit of this uh, vicious cycle, okay? So we'll look at different types of exercise. Uh, we have stretching, core stability, balance, aerobic exercise, strengthening, and hydrotherapy. So th there's benefits to stretching. Um, stretching 
decreases muscle soreness. And um, if you have spasticity and you have muscle cramps, you know that after you experience that, it's very sore and it hurts. So if you are able to stretch every day or twice a day, even 15 minutes, you're, you're, you're actually stretching that muscle out and you're relaxing that muscle. So it's not going to hurt as much. It's not going to be as sore. Okay, you're going to decrease your stiffness. You know that that rigid that rigidity that you have if you're walking and you kind of feel stiff. Stretching will help that. Um, and again, oops, I'm sorry. Help with the management of the spasticity. Um, it can prevent contractures. So it can prevent those, those spasms from occurring. If you're stretching enough, it can help with the contractures, which is when the muscle is, is contracting, okay? And you reduce your risk of injury. And some examples could be Tai Chi or yoga or just a basic stretching routine. And then the core exercise benefits. So core exercise, you're using your, your, um, your core, so your stomach and your back muscles. Okay, it helps improve your balance. It helps overall strength, improve ability to use your limbs. And some examples can be performed on a balance ball, exercises like Pilates or yoga. And I know that Pilates is very expensive, uh, but there are wonderful uh, DVDs that you can purchase. And there's also YouTube, which is free. And there are actually people living with MS that perform Pilates on YouTube, and you can do it in your home. So uh, you don't need much machinery, but it's more the movement and the exercise. So balance exercise benefits. <laughs> Helping improve walking. Um, if you have issues with balance when you walk, if you've experienced falls, uh, there are exercises that can help that. Decrease risk of fall and injury. Uh, it helps reinforce your stability and helps with gait. Okay, I read an article actually recently on one of Stu's blogs. It talked about the MS sway, the, the sway that people feel when you're off balance. Okay, that kind of exercise can help with that, the balance types of exercises. Um, so examples uh, include um, movement exercises that involve timing, tai chi, and decreasing the base of your support. So decreasing, uh, if you are using a cane, if you are using a walker, uh, you're, you're trying to decrease that. So this will help the decrease of that. And aerobic exercise benefits. And I was speaking to Jeff Siegel just before, and he was telling me that many people fear aerobic exercise. You know, it, if you have he issues with heat, and heat uh, exacerbates your symptoms, it doesn't feel good. And many people fear that that might cause a flare-up. Um, but it doesn't. But as, as your body cools, those symptoms do go away. But aerobic exercise can... Uh, increase those symptoms. So, uh, you know, you do what you can and you do what you feel comfortable doing. Um, you push a little bit, but you don't push to the point that you're in bed the next day. And you have to find your balance. Um, so aerobic exercise has tremendous benefits. Uh, it helps improve endurance. So endurance is when you're walking through the supermarket and you physically run out of gas because you can't make it from one end to the other. It'll help you get from one end of the supermarket to the other. That is your endurance. Um, it improves your energy. It helps fight fatigue. That's, that's, tr that's huge. And I have patients that tell me, Jennifer, I go to my doctor and I tell him I'm exhausted. And then he told me to exercise. Well, how am I going to exercise if I'm exhausted? It's like a catch-22, right? It doesn't make sense. So, you know, it's, it's what you can do on the day that you can do it. It's not what you can do, you know, I ran track back in college. That's not happening today. It's what you can do today. And uh, if you're having a terrible day, you're not going to exercise. You may be able to exercise two times a week. Uh, you may be able to exercise for six minutes. And if you time yourself, you may notice that that six minutes could turn into seven minutes. And then you might have a bad day that goes to four minutes. But eventually the body does build up and you can end up in 10, 15, 20 minute uh, exercise uh, timings. So you're going to improve cardiovascular system and circulation. Uh, aerobic exercise helps with weight loss. Different examples are walking on the treadmill swimming, biking, rowing. You can walk in the pool. 
um, there's a lot of ways to, to get yourself aerobically going. And strengthening exercise benefits, uh, increased muscle strength, and increased joint protection. Um, examples include working out with weights, and you all have seen those rubber bands and resistance bands. Very easy. You can use those at home once you know how to do it. So those are, those are strengthening. And then aquatic therapy, which really, really seems like it reaps the most benefits specifically to people with MS. Uh, if the heat is a problem for you, the cooling effect of the water uh, keeps your core temperature cool while you're in the pool, while you're in the water, and you're able to uh, get aerobic benefits but still be in the water. I've had so many people tell me that the minute they get into the water and they feel themselves floating, they feel pain released. They don't feel their pain as much because you're weightless, so you don't feel that joint pain as much. Um, the benefits of the resistance of water. So you don't need those bands because you've got just the water, the pushing and pulling of water you benefit from. Um, it can improve your muscle strength, obviously. It can improve your walking speed, uh, the pain relief, which I uh, just mentioned, and improve your flexibility. And if you see in, on these pictures here, um, the water barbells, these all can be purchased at Sports Authority. They're there. Um, you can do strengthening in the water. This is an incredible uh, little piece of equipment. It's a belt. It's a flotation device. You attach it to the side of the pool, to the bar, uh, the railing, and you can jog and run in the water. You'll just stay in place and float, and you're running. So that's, that's really great. And you don't get all that impact on your joints, uh, but you get the cardiovascular benefits. Right, a, a kickboard, going across the pool with a kickboard is great. And these gloves are also in Sports Authority. They make you have webbed hands. So it's like your fingers are in a glove, but it's like a, like a, like a duck's foot. And so when you push and pull against the water, you, you're creating more resistance. And those are also in, in a, sports, a sports store. And then this is what it looks like. Remember what I said about going to find a, um, a physical therapist's office that has a pool in it. These are bars for physical therapy in the water. And this helps with walking. This helps with strengthening and gait and balance. And this is uh, a physical therapist working with a patient. And I, I just, there's just so many benefits to the aquatic exercise. I, I gave you guys some examples. Uh, just marching and standing in place in the water. You're getting your cardio, and, and you can do it repetitions, holding onto the wall for balance, lifting one leg up and down, repeating the repetitions. Side leg lifts, standing at the side of the pool, holding onto the edge of the pool, doing your side leg lifts. Um, doing back leg lifts, doing front leg lifts. You have a lot of resistance uh, in the water, but you just don't feel it as much, okay? And then the runner's stretch, which is great stretching in the pool. Your body's able to, to do more because of the weightlessness, and you can hold on to the edge of the pool and kind of stretch your, the backs of your legs, stretch, stretch your arms, um, the, the, the parts of the body that you have the most spasticity or cramping. That's the parts that you really want to target. Okay. And then there's wonderful resources. Um, when I was doing uh, pr research for this presentation for you all, I found incredible amounts of things. And often, a lot of these things are free. Uh, in Miami, Dade County, and in Broward County, okay? Uh, adaptive yoga, uh, as I mentioned before, NSCFF has adaptive yoga in Miami, Dade County. That's free and once a week. Uh, it's done in a chair. Uh, just because it's in a chair, don't let it fool you. Uh, that is very challenging. I've done the class. I sweat. My arms burn. <laughs> it's hard. And Broward County also offers uh, free Adaptive yoga, and I put the phone number of the instructor here. There's a wonderful website, Broward.org Parks, that has a whole section just for adaptive exercises. And I, I really encourage you to take a look at that if it's something that you're looking for. They have Tai Chi, they have uh, aquatic therapy as well. There's free aquatic therapy in Miami-Dade County. And if you need any of this information, you can just reach out to me, uh, Tamara's here also, and we can give you that. 
Uh, if you're interested in biking, there's uh, very cool adaptive bikes. Um, I know some of our patients use them. They are very costly. That's the only thing. But um, this is one of the websites where you can look into it. And this woman, the sit and be fit woman, has anyone ever seen her on TV, right? She's a nurse. And she does a great program. And you can purchase her DVDs at home. And she's very good. So this is something that you can also think about. And Shake a Leg in Miami. Has anyone ever gone to Shake a Leg? Incredible. I know you have, Wilfredo, yeah. Um, they have everything in the water, but it's all adapted. So uh, if you have issues with balance, if you have issues uh, that you're in a wheelchair right now, you can still um, go sailing, go paddling, um, canoeing. They have everything there for you set up, so it's very nice. And then finally, I wanted to tell you about this organization. This is the Florida Disabled Outdoors Association. This was an incredible website. I just found out about this while I was researching for this presentation for you all today. But they have a calendar uh, for whatever county you're in, and they've got wonderful events going on. Um, and they've got weekly classes, they've got uh, events, they've got everything with going on in the community. Uh, so it's some, I called, they were there, there was someone to give me information. So this is also another great community resource. Um, so I hope that this has given you a bit of inspiration and a little bit of ideas of things that you can do. Uh, this is, you know, everybody has to find what they like. Everybody's different. And um, thank you very much. All right, so next we're going to do Q&A. I think Carmen had a question. Carmen has a question? Where's Carmen? I don't know. She had a question. I name. don't know. Who's got questions? Raise your hands. Nobody's got a question? Seriously. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is, is doing cardio outside, like on the treadmill or bikes, as good as doing it inside the pool? Is, is, is the question, is cardio outside of the pool as good as in the pool? Or it's, in the pool as, as good as outside the pool? You know, each one has its own benefits, and really, it's what you're comfortable doing. I mean, if, you're, if we're in South Florida, and it's 90 degrees out, and you're jogging, and you have heat sensitivity, cardio in the pool is probably going to work better for you. So, you know, it's, it's what makes you feel the best, really. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, see? It takes one person to get everybody else to raise their hands. <laughs> off ha offhand, do you know where there is a physical therapy with, the, with a pool? I, I found a few. I found a few. Uh, so if you want to, just give me a call. I found a few when I was researching this. Yeah. Oh, you remember. Um, I was uh, sent to the Jackson Ryder Trauma Center for um, Physical Therapy, and my insurance company just wouldn't approve like more than four visits. Right. Uh, and as of a week ago, they picked a, another physical therapy for me, which is some company called Cora, mm -hmm. which. I was told that that's like where people go before they end up going to a hospice. Um, can your insurance company pick a physical therapist for you? No, your insurance company can't pick a physical therapist for you, but they can give you a network of physical therapists and then you have patient choice. Um, have you spoken directly to your insurance company? Uh, yes, yes. And, and they have assigned you? And they assigned me and didn't tell me. They assigned me since October the 9th, mm -hmm. and they never told us anything yeah. at all. 
Do you have an, a period where you can have a change, like an open enrollment? Uh, it's already gone. It's gone. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Um, especially, I don't know what type of insurance you have, but they have the uh, the MMA rollout with, with Medicaid, and they gave everybody a period where you can uh, choose, and if you don't choose, they will assign you. And you have 90 days from that assignment period to change, but if you didn't know you were assigned, you have to wait a year to get reassigned and pick your doctor. Great. So, I'm sorry. They, oh, they do send a letter, but when people get the letter, they may not realize how important that is. Thank you. Sure, Dr. Brooks has a comment also. I work with an organization called the Case Managers Association of America, uh, helping them to understand multiple sclerosis. And I was just in Pittsburgh yesterday. Uh, we were talking about this issue. And do you know that every, every person in this room with insurance has a case manager in the managed care world? Nobody, nobody knows that. I mean, it's amazing how many people don't know that. So my thought is call the insurance company and don't fight with some high school graduate clerk who has got a checklist to say no to you. Say, I want to speak to my nurse case manager. So you're then speaking to a healthcare professional or a social worker who can be your advocate to help you get through the system. That's great. Great information. Thank you. Jennifer, I'm yes. sorry. I Hi. missed the website address for the adaptive exercises for the parks. Let the me Bar go back. County Hold on parks. a second. No, the other one. The other, Is this the, the one? No, the, the parks with the adaptive. That's it. Okay. Again, for anybody who misses anything that's been shown, you will be able to see it in less than a week from now by just going to our YouTube channel and picking up on all these different website names and all the information that each of the speakers are providing. Okay? Anybody else have a question? Over here, Stu. I want to know where is the aquatic uh, therapy where, where's the location of them? If I want to go to one of those... Uh, where, where do you live? In Kendall. Oh, okay. Tamara's going to give you that information. Okay. Okay. So she was asking, where, where is the aquatic therapy uh, center in Miami? I'm getting there. Hi. In your Hi. presentation, you stated there's physiotherapy and physical. What's the difference between those They're two? They're interchangeable, but you see both, mm -hmm. and um, you, know, you wonder what is the difference. Actually, physiotherapy, the term is used more in, in Canada and, and in Europe, but it's interchangeable. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, we want to thank Jennifer for coming down here today and giving her wisdom. Thank you. Next, we're going to have Jeff Siegel. And Jeff occasionally might ask if anybody wants to volunteer with coming up. And so you'll just listen and answer him as he chooses. All right, how's everyone doing? You guys got your food in front of you, so I got a little competition. I'm here to talk to you about exercise and MS, similar to what the last talk was about, but I'm going to do a little more practical, hands-on stuff. And I'm going to be taking questions as I go. So first I'll do the same thing Jennifer did, was I'm going to tell a little bit about myself and who I am and why I'm here. Uh, let's see. Exercise has been a part of my whole life. You know, I, before it was called exercise, it was just called having fun. And I'm sure you guys have been there. I went to college. I went to Florida State. I got my degree. I studied exercise science. It was, um, it, it was something that was in my cards because my whole life I was an athlete. And everybody's an athlete to some extent. I mean, that's what we are. You know, we do better when we're having fun. I mean, that's what life is all about. Anyone in here not have fun, especially when they were children? All right. That's something that as you get older, you stop having fun, you stop playing, you stop doing the things that you enjoy. Well, after I got my degree, I ran into the same issue that a lot of you guys have. But uh, for 16 years and I think 11 days ago, I was diagnosed with MS myself. So I'm. I'm doing well, I'm happy, I've been in, in worse situations than I am now, but right now I can probably do the whole talk on one leg. There was a time that I couldn't stand up on both legs. I couldn't see and I could barely talk. And all I wanted to do was be heard <laughs> and stand up. And every morning what I did was tried. 
I attempted to stand and I fell and I attempted and attempted and attempted because one thing that I had was determination. I knew that I was going to do it. I mean, I knew there was nothing and nothing could have stopped me from thinking that I was going to do something. Uh, when someone told me I couldn't or someone told me I can't, that was basically lighting my fire. So one of the things that I had to do was understand the difference between my expectations and my potential. Do you guys know what your potential is? You ever hear the sky's the limit? Well, you don't know until you attempt it. And with something like this, with movement, I'm going to call, I'm trying to sway away from exercise and talk more about movement because if you move more, you're exercising. That's what it's all about. We're beings. We're human beings and we're meant to move. And when we don't move, we're less able to move. Does that make sense? You guys with me there? So when the, when the doctor tell, asks you what, what's your biggest complaint and, they, and you tell him it's fatigue and he says, well, you need to do more and you think he's crazy, he's not crazy. Because I guarantee everybody in this room, if you don't exercise right now, you probably have at some point in your life. And I also guarantee there's a handful of people in here that think about exercising every day and think they're going to start and they beat themselves up over it for a longer period of time using more energy than it probably take for you to actually do the exercise. And then at the end of the day, you look back and say, well, uh, I really wanted to do it. I'll do it tomorrow. But that's not how it works because today is, the, is the, today is where everything begins. You know, no matter how bad yesterday was and no matter what you think about the future, you can change the future by doing something today. So if you know your potential and your expectations are lower than your potential, raise your expectations a little bit. Uh, now, I'm, I'm a personal trainer. I'm in Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, I predominantly work with people with MS for many reasons, but they kind of flock to me because I understand and I've been there and I'm in their same shoes. So with the science behind what I'm doing, I'm also able to use personal references and, and understand what they're feeling. So when somebody tells you, um, no one can tell you to exercise. That's not, that's not going to work. You got to want it. You know, how many people in here want to exercise? Raise your hand. How many in here do not exercise? And I'm not going to hold it against you. But do you think about exercising? So the best thing you can do is see yourself do it. If you envision yourself doing it, you're much more likely going to do it. And in, 19, in 2007, I was awarded National Personal Trainer of the Year through the National Strength and Conditioning Association. And I did that not because of anything. Thank you. What allowed me to win that was other people believing in me. And the way I got them to believe in me was by letting them believe in themselves. And if you believe in yourself, there's, you know, there's so much more opportunity everywhere. Now, you already heard this consult with your physician before you start an exercise program. I've only heard a couple of cases where a doctor said do not exercise because exercise is all relative to where you are right now. So if you once were a marathon runner and your doctor tells you to exercise, it doesn't mean go run a marathon. It means you start from where you are right now and you build your way up. And if you ever, and I know there's a handful of people in here that if I asked if they exercise, they would tell me no and they would tell me the reason is because of where they used to be. How many of you think about where you were at one point when you don't exercise? It's a thought. It's the way we think because we're conceited, you know? We think, wow, I was able to do this. I should be able to do that again. Well, if you, if you put, go backwards and you think about how hard you work to get there, then you try it again because the hard work pays off no matter what you do. And the, there's incentives, and some of them are just good health. So these are just, this is something that I just threw in here. There's bas basically what I'm getting at with this is, there's only so many ways you can move, okay? Each joint can move a certain direction and on a, on a different plane. So there's a plane that goes this way, your horizontal transverse plane. There's a plane that's this way and there's a plane that's this way. That's how we, that's how we move. And we can move in between planes as well. But trying, if you do everything on a plane that's straight in front of you, that's how you better prepare to live the rest of your life. Inside a box and not seeing outside the box. You know, we have gotta live outside the box a little bit. I talk about the four pillars of human movement, standing in locomotion, level changes, pushing and pulling, and rotation, because that's what we do in real life. And when you go to the gym, it's great to, to succeed in the gym, but you gotta get back to where, why you're in the gym. Why do you guys go to the gym? Right? I can't hear, but... 
to exercise, right? But what's the reason? You got to have a reason to do it. Good. To feel good. How many of you can stand up? How many of you guys stand up because you can stand up? I mean, the, the goal is to stand more. And every time you get up, if you can, you're ahead of the game. And then if you sit back down, you're at even. So you want to always try to, and if you can't stand up, you've got to raise your arms and do stuff. So basically, how many of you guys have heard me speak before? OK, if you heard me do this before, you're not included. <laughs> But you can, you can still smile, which is one of the other biggest benefits of exercise is a smile because a smile radiates through a room and it spreads and it makes everyone around you happy. But I'm going to ask for some participation. The only thing I want is if you're going to participate that you give me 100%. Deal? Okay, I want everybody, if you can, to raise your hand as high as you can possibly raise it. All right, now raise it this much higher. How many of you were able to raise your hand this much higher? A lot of you. I say most of you because I saw your hands come up higher. So I told you guys to give 100%, right? Yeah. Well, is this more than 100%? Yeah, yeah. So you got to think outside the box. If, so, if you're going to do something, especially if it's a job, if you can do this much more every day at your job, you're going to be this much more successful. If there's money involved, then it's a whole other ball game, right? That's the biggest incentive. A lot of people have all kinds of different incentives, but when it comes down to it, nobody, nobody dislikes money, right? You ever hear rich reports, nice to have money? So if I were to tell you I had $10,000 in my pocket for the, for the first person that can get their hand two feet higher than that, what would you do? I want to see someone do something. Okay, there, she stood up, right? How much more than 100% is that? Okay, the point is you can always do more if you find a way. If you settle on what you're doing, you're not going to move ahead at all. Life is just going to be the way it is, and it's not going to change. But you've got to find a way rather than look for an excuse. Uh, and when you're diagnosed with MS, you know, a lot changes, right? But it doesn't have to. Who you are is one thing that will never be taken from you. I remember the day before I was diagnosed. Do you guys remember the day before you were diagnosed? Do you remember what your goals were, what you thought about life? Did they change the next day? They shouldn't have, because if you have goals, they should stay the same unless you've reached them and then, you're, then you raise your goals. But if you have something like MS or something else, it doesn't mean your goals change. It just means the direction that you take in order to get to your goals may change a little bit. OK, resistance exercise. I'm going to talk mostly about resistance exercise. I will talk a little bit about cardiovascular or aerobic exercise. But resistance exercise um, is the best thing for gaining strength. Okay, does that make sense? Pushing, pulling, um, adduction, abduction, all that stuff against resistance. That's how you build muscle, with more force than what you're used to. So you have to build. It's a progressive thing that you do. Um, I've got all kinds of tools here, but what's the best piece of equipment out there? You. You are. Because if you can stand up, that's a squat. If you can raise your arms, that's an arm raise. You know, if you add something to it, then you're adding a little bit more and you're uh, putting more demands on your muscle. And that's um, uh, an acronym that I always went by, specific SAID, S-A-I-D, specific adaptations to impose demands. That's what your body lives off of. So if you're going to exceed and, and exceed what you're doing right now, you have to give yourself a little bit more demands, you know, and your body adapts to it, you know, like carrying, carrying a bag. It doesn't have to be a weight. It can be just about anything. Uh, now, free weights, I have a bunch of different things up here. I'm going to do a couple things with, my, with body weight first before I get into that slide. Anybody want to come up, volunteer? Come on up. But if you do, you have to look in the camera and say that you give your uh, consent to be on this recording. You gotta look there oh, first. first. Yeah. I consent to be on this. Okay. Good enough. You guys all hear her? Okay. Do you exercise? Can you currently exercise? Not as much as I should. No, but do you? Are yeah, later. Okay. How for how much? How long? I don't want to like really beat you up on this, half but an hour. half an hour. Okay. If someone exercises for half an hour and they tell me they exercise for half an hour a day and they say, what should I be doing? 
Uh, my response is usually 31 minutes. <laughs> because if you can do a little bit more, then it's a little bit better. How's your balance? It's good. OK, let me see you stand on one boot. She's wearing boots. So that's difficult. You see what she, you see her ankle turning a little bit like that? That's pretty good. Yeah, Now let me see, yeah, now, well that's, that's proprioception. Proprioception is where you are in space. So she's adjusting to external force and that's making her body move a little bit so she can still stand on one leg. And that's what happens with a lot of us. We sway, like, like Jennifer was talking about, and if someone doesn't have MS and wants to come up here and see what it feels like to have MS, I've got a little thing I can do for you too. Don't worry, I'm not gonna give it to you. Let me see your other foot. Okay, have you ever done a single-legged squat? Um, I'm not sure. Have you ever done a flip in one leg? What's a flip? Like a backflip? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm just kidding. Go. I'm not gonna have her do that. When I was young. All right, I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page, which we weren't. <laughs> okay, give me both your hands. Stand on one leg and do a little bit of a squat, and come up. Have you ever done that before? Um, yeah. You should, because we operate on two legs, but one independent of another. Um, now, what about a regular squat? Can you do regular yeah. squat? Yeah. A regular squat would be, rather than tracking your, your knees over your toes, it would be bringing your weight back more so that way you don't put too much pressure on your knees. But that's your body weight. Now I'll tell you, this, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with your body weight that even if you're not standing or able to stand. But what I had her do on one leg, I just wanted to see how her balance was. Some things that I do with my clients is when they're able to get to one leg, I mean, first is wide base of support. Okay, you ever see a child crawl? A child crawls the same way a, a grown up walks. You know, with your arms swaying, one arm forward, one arm back. So that way it's basically gonna square at all times, every time you got all four on the ground, so that you're more stable. Now for you, what I, what I would do with someone who's got balance as good as you, one leg. Try to knock me off balance. Pretty good. <laughs> All right, but that's fun. You see, she's smiling. You can go down. I just wanted to get someone up here that can do something that I can see that when they accomplished what they were to do, you saw a big smile on her face, right? So how else can we increase our movement? You know, it, how far can you walk? How, do you know how far you can walk? How many of you have overdone it and had an exacerbation or something has happened to you versus how many of you have the fear of overdoing it and don't do anything, therefore you're not having an exacerbation or you can't blame it on exercise? <coughs> How many of you fear doing too much? Because my biggest fear is that you guys are all doing too little. Okay, and you guys gotta find out what not too much is, but what almost too much is. And then you can skate on the edge. You know, if I was given this lecture and I, and I tried to do it from two feet forward, I'd fall right on my face. But I know there's an edge here, so you gotta find your limits. And it's not always easy to do. You need a professional usually to help you out. But if you can find your limits, your limits will rise. You know, your, your expectations can be greater and your potential rises with it. So that's something that's very important for you to do. Um, I'll go into some dumbbells and some of those things up there. Is there anything you guys got questions about before I get into more, some more practical stuff? Uh, that's something that, that's a difficult question because it's a, uh, based on an individual that has two, two separate autoimmune problems, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and MS. So you got to look at the recommendations for both and they don't kind of clash with each other. So the, the, the recommendations for exercise with RA is not as high impact stuff. So you can just take that out of what you were going to do for your MS. And, and kind of fee get a feel for it. But you talk to your doctor about it. And if you find a doctor or physical therapist that can give you what they feel your limitations are, you know what that means? Everything else is fair game. So if you can find out what you can't do, which is if you can't do it and you try to do it, you're gonna keep trying to do it, it's not gonna work. Find out what you can do. It's more important to know what you can do than what you can't. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Um, they do. You t talk to, yeah, talk to Jennifer. She'll get you some names. Uh, any other questions? You got any questions about any particular exercise? All right, let the games begin. Well, first I'm going to show you so, uh, an example of each of those things.
You sure you don't got any questions? The thing about the gym is, the stronger you get, the better you're gonna be able to perform in the gym. The better you perform in the gym should not be measured how well you are in the gym, it should be measured how well you do outside of the gym. Does that make sense? So you wanna mimic stuff that you're doing in your regular daily activities in the gym. Not exactly, you're not gonna bring a broom and sweep and stuff like that, but you can mimic motions that do that. And the, like I was saying before, there's only so many planes that the body can move on. And if you wanna know what muscle, what particular muscle's working, A, you can palpate it and you can touch it. But if you're bringing something closer to your body, this is a curl, which is a single joint exercise, which I'd prefer someone getting that from a row because it's a multi-joint, but if they can only do a single, single joint exercise, this is what they would do. Imagine this is shortening. So from here to here, it's getting pulled. Imagine there being like a belt. That's why this muscle would be contracting. When you, do, when you flex, what muscle are you flexing? Yeah, you're doing both, you're co-contracting. That's the only way that you can make a muscle with your bicep. Your tricep has to work against your bicep, so you're really doing both, which some people with MS have that problem with spasticity and muscular co-contraction. So you ever try to do something and your arms just stuck or your legs stiff? That's because your agonist and your antagonist, the agonist is the prime mover and the antagonist is the opposite side of the muscle that shouldn't be working, but when they work together, that's what you get is a flexed muscle and you're not gonna get anything out of it other than, hey, look, my muscles is flexed. That's all that's gonna come from that. So that's something that working out and exercising with and, and increasing your movement can help with is decreasing co-contractions of the muscles and or spasticity. Um, now these are, these are dumbbells. I, I use these because they go from 30 pounds to down to five pounds and they're pretty safe. This is a medicine ball that's soft this is a sandbag. Let's see what else we got. I didn't bring a barbell. I want someone to come up here because I got something fun for you to do. All right, you can come on up. You got to say you give consent. Tell the camera that you consent to be on this video. All right, come on up. Do you have MS? No. Okay, perfect. So before I have her do what I'm going to have her do, what I want you to do is stand with both of your feet as close as you can together. Okay, do you feel, do you feel steady? You do? Okay, now look up. Do you feel yourself swaying a little bit? Okay, now close your eyes. Now you, do you feel yourself swaying? Keep them closed, no cheating. Okay, now what I want you to do is stand on one leg without your eyes closed. So open your eyes. Okay, now, now close your eyes. More, a little more difficult? Yeah. Okay, that's how we feel a lot of the time. Can you guys agree? Okay, that's, you're losing proprioception, which has to do with your sight and where you are in space. So if you're standing on one leg, A, you have a very short lever arm, or you've got no, uh, no stability, because there's no other leg or a cane. And then without sensation, or without uh, using your senses, like your vision, you lose a little bit more. Okay, now what I want you to do is, let's see. No, you don't have to do that. Hold this. Um, okay, come over to the edge here. You see down there, pick a spot. Is there anything that bothers you at all in your life? Or you just have everything perfect? <laughs> come on, there's something. It, it, you don't have to tell me what it is. There's something like at school or somewhere, or they're outside of school or somewhere that just annoys you. Well, look at something down there, and I want you to take this up here and throw it as hard as you can down at whatever it is you don't like. And I don't want it to be a wimpy throw. I want them to, oh, come on, over your head, all the way up and slam it down. Okay, that feel good? It wouldn't if it was the th whatever you were thinking about down there, right? Do it again. Come on, you can do better than that. Okay. Two things. One, she flattened the ball out. The other thing, she's got a smile, right? Was that fun? A little bit fun? Something else I like to do with people for reactions, send, send over there. Watch out for the dumbbell. Hand-eye coordination, here, look at me. Catch that. Throw it back to me. Is it easy? Yeah. If you had your eyes closed, it wouldn't be, would it? No. What if you had one eye open? Try it with one eye, a little bit harder? Yeah. Got no depth perception. Now, while you're throwing that to me, I'm gonna throw this to you. Oh, that's okay. It, 
Okay, now what I want you to do is, go ahead, come on. Now stand on one leg and do it. I didn't say you had to smile, though. Ah, uh, that's okay, I'll get it. So that's the kind of stuff I like doing with some of my clients, but you need two people to do that, which means you gotta get two people together, which is socialization. Okay, you can go down, thank you very much. I think as much of the benefits of exercise that you've learned about, the biggest one is a better sense of self, um, like you really have a better sense of self-esteem and, and feel better about yourself. Because if you feel good about yourself, everybody around you is gonna know that. If you're exercising and working out and moving more, people are gonna notice it. And you're gonna start passing them by. And it's for you, it's to feel better. Now, one of the side effects of exercise is looking better too which isn't so bad, but you get better blood pressure, you know, uh, more flexibility, and if, and if you're doing resistance training, you're able to work flexibility in the range of motion of the exercise, so you get more flexible. But there's a question I got for you. You guys ever see someone that looks great running on the side of the road? Yeah. You think, wow, that person looks great, right? You don't think, wow, look at that guy. He must have great blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but I can guarantee you they do. So that's another thing. With people with MS, we're a sedentary population, unfortunately. It doesn't have to be that way. But you can spend all day thinking about the things that you're not doing when it doesn't take much to do just something. When someone asks me how much should I exercise, like I said, if you say 30 minutes, I say 31. Well, usually the answer is I don't exercise at all. One minute of exercise is 100% better than none, right? So you start out by a minute, and if you, how many people in here have a treadmill at home? How many people here have a treadmill at home and use it for something other than clothes? <laughs> well, I challenge anybody in here who has a treadmill or access to a treadmill to just get on it and stand on it, because you don't have to do anything but stand on it. The point is, the toughest part about doing something on a treadmill is getting on the treadmill. You know, I've had clients who I work with them who are, who are lacking abilities and their spouse tells me, oh, they, can you get them to do this and can you get them to do that? And I ask them, what's he doing? He's doing nothing and he's sitting there rubbing his big belly. And, and so what I tell her and, and the person is, what I want you to do is if I'm going to work with her, she's working out. She's doing great. You got to stand on the treadmill for just two minutes every day. And nobody's going to stand on a treadmill for two minutes without turning it on. It's really foolish, you know? It's really a strange thing. Uh, so if you increase movement, now, you, now I'm talking about other things, combining different forms of exercise. This is a dumbbell. Now these are just different types of machines and different types of resistance when you go to a gym. Some people can't do something with a dumbbell because they're lacking the coordination and the movement. So you do it on a fixed machine. The only thing you, that you lose when you're doing something on one of these machines that are fixed is uh, coordination, so to say. You're learning how to, how to move that rod that goes up and down attached to the weights rather than controlling your movement. But it's also, when it becomes a safety factor, that's very important to take into consideration too. Uh, I like free weights if you can use them. I like exercise bands. I got a bunch of them back here. I'll take some out and show you some in a, in a couple minutes. Um, aquatics, she touched on aquatics. They're great. If you can get yourself in the water, as it, the only thing that I tell people is get in the water as long as you can get out. <laughs> All right, you get it? You know, you got to be with somebody else. If you have trouble getting in, find someone to help you get out. Resistance bands and cables, that's another, uh, another type of exercise which I will get from back here. I'm gonna need a volunteer. The only thing I require from my volunteer is a heartbeat. So, now I want another volunteer. Come on, someone come on up. Stuart, you wanna come up? You, the orange shirt, okay, you're coming up. I don't care, everybody can come up. <laughs> You got to look into the camera and say that you consent to be up here. Okay, what I'm going to have you do is... No, you can sit down right here. And you can sit down... And me? Yeah, you can sit down anywhere or you can stand, it doesn't matter. I'm going to come down here. 
What? Okay. First thing is, do you do squats? Of course. Of course. Not. not of course not. Stand up. Stand up once. Okay. I want you to do that. Sit down right there. Okay. Do you do squats? Yes. A lot of them. Okay. Stand up a hundred times. No, I'm kidding. I'm not gonna do it. No, but just standing. If you can stand up, you can do a squat. It's a modified squat. So if someone can't do a full squat, not like this. But you got to put your butt on the seat, or, or like you're sitting on the seat. That way you get your weight <laughs> back the proper way. Band and cable. I'm going to let you guys try this. Here, you pull on that. OK, pull on it four times. <laughs> nice and slow. It's nice and slow, under control. That's just like a, doing a row in a row machine, except she's working her lower back, too. <laughs> let me see how to do it with both. Pull. Keep, no, no, both together. Yeah. No, nah, don't do that. <laughs> now she's working her lower back. Stay, try not to move your body. Working her upper, upper back and lower back. Okay, and I want you to try that. Lower back. Your lower back is working because it's preventing you from coming forward, so it's stabilizing her body. So that's, a, that's something if you have a low back problem and you do something like a row, it's not a lot of turning or pulling, but you are strengthening your, your muscles in your back. Okay, let it come forward and pull. You feel that? If you, if, you had a, if you had something up against your chest or something, then it would take your back out of the equation because you'd have a support. Okay. Now I want, I want you guys both to do something else. I require this with everybody. Here. You, anything you're upset about? Anything ever? You! Me. Okay, then I'm right here. I'm going to put my head down there and throw this at me. I'm just kidding. Here. You can't whisper or you're going to still be on the mic. Here. <laughs> take that. Now you can stand up. Do I stand up or is you can stay seated if you want. Throw that down as hard as you can at the ground. How'd that feel? Good. Yeah? You can get a whole workout just using these. Does that feel good? No. No? But she's laughing. She's not I'm telling the truth. Laughing. Okay, so doing something like that, you're working your core, you're working your back, you're working your legs. Now here, catch this. Here, let me see here. that. Here. Um, it's coming right back at you, so... Here, catch. Catch. Ow! Oh, see, it's here, catch. Hey, you cheated because nah. you hit my hand. Now I'm not going to be able to write. Oh, yeah, you can do that hand. You got two hands. If you got two hands and one doesn't work, use the other one. You asked for it, you got it. Here. Okay. I need another person up here. Thank you, though. It's someone else. Come on. No, that's it. You guys are afraid. I'm not going to throw anything at you. At least. Not too heavy. The shirt over there. Who? The glasses. The big boy. Well, whoever doesn't, who's not coming up doesn't want to come up. Let's do this for a second. Come here. Um, we're going to do that toss thing I was showing you. So catch that. Ready? Go. Oh. That's all right. You got to do a squat to pick it up. Do you have MS? No. Nope. No? All right. Then I'm going to have you come up on stage. Come here. While I'm getting something else set up, what I want you to do, same thing I had her do. Stand with your feet touching each other. Touching each other. Closer. Okay. Do you feel stable? Put your look straight up. You feel a little bit of a sway? Yeah. Close your eyes. You feel that? You feel that sway? Yes. Okay, I, I don't have to even have them go on one leg. That's because you don't practice that. Who would practice that? Unless you really drink a lot and drive, which you shouldn't be. <laughs> That's what we all feel like, though, right? You know, lacking stability, you feel like you're swaying, you're all over the place. Exercise can help that because you have a better sense of where you are in space, which is proprioception. Uh, okay, you can, you can get down now. Now everything that I've done for the most part standing I can do on this if you have the balance to sit on it. So you can do the same thing as that. You can do the slams while sitting on a stability ball. And I want everybody to sit up straight. Come on, everyone's doing this. Watch in two minutes they're all going to be doing it again. The, the exercises that you do for your back 
and your front help you with your posture. However, posture is something that's a habit, you know? And, and if you don't practice it every day, it doesn't matter how strong your muscles are, you're still gonna do this. And when you do this, I want somebody to lean, lean, sit like you're at a desk like this and try to take a deep breath. It's not working now, is it? Now, now bring your chest, out, stick your chest out, shoulder blades together. Now take a deep breath. You get a lot more. Oxygen is pretty important. So if, you're, if you have bad posture, you're not getting as much oxygen as you should be getting. So if that's not a good reason to do it, I'll find something else for you guys. Um, exercise balls, like this. Something like this you can use sitting at your computer. You can use it while you're eating dinner, lunch, breakfast, or whatever snacks you have in between, which is how we should be eating, right? You should have five meals a day. When you're a child, how many parents do we have here? Would, would you, you probably go to jail if you only fed your child when they were an infant three times a day, right? You, every two to three hours they're eating. That's how it should be your whole life. When, when you send kids to school, they have breakfast, they have a snack. They have lunch, they come home, they have a snack. They have dinner, hopefully they don't have too much for dessert after that. But that's how we're supposed to live. That's how our metabolism stays the way we are. If you think you're going to eat one meal a day and lose weight, it's going to be a real difficult road for you because you're gonna hold on to more calories because your body's not gonna know that you're gonna, when the next time you're gonna get a meal. So your metabolism actually slows down when that happens. Um, the medicine balls I covered, bouncy balls, aha. Balloons. If it's not in my pocket, I'll forget it. I have problems with my short-term memory and I have problems with my short-term memory. <laughs> I used to use that when I was forget, forgot something in a talk. I would say the, the phrase of, you know, there's the three things that lead to disability with MS are what? Fatigue, cognition, I don't remember the third one. <laughs> oh. Anybody else have a balloon? Good. That'd be really weird, wouldn't it? All right, who wants to come up and do a balloon exercise? Hey, you can't be the only one to come up. I'll have to charge you. All right, come on, someone else, please. It'll be fun. You'll smile. Yeah, right here in the front. Don't tell anybody we know each other. Have a seat right here. Don't go ahead and say that I can send you. All right, this is one of my favorite exercises that I do with some of the people I work with if they can stand up. What I want you to do is catch the balloon, all right? I'm gonna throw it. Don't look at me, look forward. Okay. Just cheating. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Very good, here, give it back. <laughs> Sit back down. One more time. Go, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> See, what I do with some people is if they're unable to stand, then just sitting in a chair and hitting a balloon to them, stay seated. Not so easy, but you still got to catch it. Here, hit it back. Now what if I hit it over here? You see how she's got to control her body? That's working her core. Now for someone who's in a chair who's unable to stand up, you can still do a core exercise just by catching. Now I've had somebody who's only been able to use one side of their body. Put one arm at your side. Now what I want you to do, you don't have to catch it, but you just got to hit it. So you still got to control your body, right? Yeah. So if you can't use one hand, don't worry. Use the other one. You got another one, and if you don't use it enough, it's going to get like that other hand. Now what I want you to do is stand up and get it. Okay, she's doing squats, and she's working on her coordination, hand-eye coordination. Now something like that would be, uh, you had, there's different progressions of doing that. I'd, I'd always start by doing it in front of the person then from behind the person, then have them stand up and get it, and then the last one would be here. Hit it, just hit it up in the air. You'd have to try to get up and catch it before it lands. Now with a balloon, you can tap it. Now that's not easy to do, it's something you have to work towards. But this is what I do, I, I show people how to do this, so if I don't know how to do it, I don't have a job. Thank you. Thank you. Now playing with a balloon, usually brings on a smile. Most people 
correlate balloons and parties and, you know, it's all party. That's what you got to think of it as. Okay, I put oranges, apples because I was doing a program once where I really had nothing to throw and they were actually putting oranges and apples out. So it's, you know, comparing apples and oranges, all you're comparing is the weight of them. So it's okay. But I had people throwing apples and oranges back and forth. Um, you find a partner, it makes it easier. If you don't find a partner, it's up to you to do it. Um, that's what my profession is, is, is one on one. I do one with three people, four people. It depends on what people want. Uh, medicine balls, bouncy balls. I love the bouncy balls because they're inexpensive. Now I've had some people's workouts be as simple as just doing this and catching it because just because it looks easy for me doesn't mean it looks easy or is easy for somebody else. Any other volunteers? Anybody want anything? Anybody want to come up? With these, you could also put them between your knees. I like a bigger ball for that. Squeeze, adduct. Your hands, adduction, same thing. And for people that have problems holding on to things, I got some other stuff back here. I'm going to switch the slides. Now, this slide is basically what it comes down to. You got to find something that you like. I've got probably 100 pieces of equipment up here, and I'll take a couple other things up. But you can't just be limited to one or two things or something that's too difficult for you to do. I've never worked with anybody as their trainer that has failed because I will not give somebody an exercise that I know that they can't do. And that's what you guys have to do as well. You have to pick something that you're able to do, and then you'll be able to do a little bit better, and then it'll go on to be something else. Let's see. These are great because you can do these sitting down at the television. Anyone ever seen one of these? Any of you ever seen a television? But anyhow, what, what you can do is pedal while you're while you're doing anything. And I think that video games, anyone here have children that play video games? Wouldn't it be great if a video game came with this? And in order to play it, you had to ride? I think they should do that. They should store, the, uh, store an amount and you're only allowed to play as long as you've rode on this thing. So what I like to have people do, I have one of these that plugs in also that where, where you can, if someone can't ride, they can still get the motion of a ride. This is the, the least expensive one that I could find, which is why I got it, so I can show that it's only about $20. And they go up to a lot. And all this is a bike. You can put it under your desk. I got this at Walmart. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll sit on this. Now, what I do whenever I get a piece of equipment, it's kind of funny, but I, I try to do everything with it that it's not intended to do, like this. This isn't very easy to do, but I'm using my core. But the first thing I did when I got this piece of equipment was, oh wow, what can I do? I can, I can put it on the table and use it with my arms, which is just going to look like this. And then I started to think, well, I can do something better than that. Now I'm all about core. Or do something like this. Now that's not something I'd have someone try for the first time, but it's not difficult if you have a strong core. And, and that's what the point is, to be stronger. To be able to live life easier and enjoy it more without being out of breath. I can't even tell you how many people think they can't exercise because of their fatigue problems. And how many people who have MS blame their fatigue on MS? A lot of fatigue is from MS. But if you have a certain time of day that you're really tired, don't pick that time to exercise. Pick another time, because you'd be surprised how good a shape you can get in and how much your fatigue levels will drop just by doing some fun stuff, like hitting the ball around. Um, 
Then there's also working on unstable surfaces. I'm just going to throw up a few things here. And I need another volunteer. I need a volunteer. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're not going to. All I want you to do is come and sit on this. I'll wait. I'm not going anywhere. What I like to do, with, there's so many things I like to do with cones. Um, if I get the cones out and I go to someone's house to work with them, they have no idea what I'm going to have them do. Some people, I just have them stack. Stack the cones, like, I, like what you do in occupational therapy. Or do a course where they walk in and out of the cones, then they have to stack them or stack cups. And then I time them and I see who can do it, I see if they can do it under the time that they beat the last time. And if not, no big deal, as long as they get it done. I'm still waiting on, you coming up still? All right, anyone can come up at any time. This is a, supposed to be a fun, there you go. There you go. You see, I give him a lot of credit. And have a seat right there. You got to give your consent to the camera. Hello. Yes. <laughs> I approve my uh, picture. Okay. Put both your hands in front of you. Okay. So you're pretty stable. Pretty good. All right. Can you lift both your knees up one at a time? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Now let me see the other leg. So your right side's more affected. That's okay. I just wanted to see which side was more affected. I need the exercise. Yeah. I never yeah. do it. Why not? I'm going to... Uh... Well, don't worry about it. T tell me why you want to exercise and you'll have, I you'll have better... I need to exercise. Yeah, you need to. So you got to want it. you got to want to do it. Yes, I want it. Okay. Catch that. Well, oh, using your abs a little bit, feel your stomach muscle working. Yeah. You have no idea how much his abs are contracting right now just to stay like that. It's not, it's not easy, right? No, it's not, but I, I But something as simple as this, I can spend an hour with you just throwing the ball back and forth and you'd be sore tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. I used to do, I used to go to the pool. Whatever. Yeah, you know what? I used to be this tall. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now what I would have you do is, with both hands, touch the cone without getting up. Okay, now come up. Now touch it again. No, you don't have, no, 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 not stand, I mean, right back to here. Stay seated the whole time. I just want oh, you to sit down. Okay. Now touch the cone with that. That's a reach. Keep, keep doing it. You're working your lower back and you're, and you're working your uh, stability. Okay, now something like that, if he was able to stand and, and move around right now, which Maybe down the road you'll be able to, but yeah. um, there you go. He's doing it. That's the best kind of exercise. Any kind of exercise. Let's, let's have the music. Let's come and dance. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. It was the best thing for, for uh, exercise is your own body. Now, something that I would do with this, I have people do reaches. Like what he was doing from a seated position. You don't have to do it standing. I don't, I don't want you to okay. follow. I'm a Robert. I met a Robert, so don't worry. There you go. I fell yeah. so many times. That you see that? Now do, now do it with your right side, never, since your right side's your troubled side. I never okay, broke the bone. It. Stand up. I don't want to. I, I don't want to. a lot of time. I, I teach everything. I will sue you. Don't but I don't teach how to break bones. Okay, thank you very much, though. That was great. What I do with these cones here. Can I sit on the ball? Is. Can I sit on the ball? Nope. 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 <laughs> I'd have to have you talk to my attorney first. My daughter, she's an attorney, so it's yeah. no problem. Yeah, <laughs> that's even scarier. <laughs> but what I have people do with the cones is have, just like what he was doing, is just a simple reach with good form. So now I'm working the back of my legs. I'm working my back, and I'm using stability. And then the next step of that would be to put one foot back, less surface area, and then eventually it would be and, and if you're able to stand on one leg, your body adapts. Your neur neural adaptation to exercise is major and it's real. Because if you, you ever say, like we hear about muscle memory, you know, that's nerves. Your nerves know the pathways and they remember them somewhat, even if there's some distortion there. So if you're able to touch, something like touching your foot, 
If you're able to stand on one, one leg, I tell people, well, it's okay, touch your knee. Usually the first time, they're all over the place. And I say, okay, regroup. Try it again. You go a little further so they can touch their toe. And so you see how many times you can do it in a row. So the point is to keep trying to get a little bit more out of it. If you can stand on one leg, great, do it on one leg. If you can't, do it on two legs. If you can't stand on two legs, do it while you're seated. But don't give up on it because you can't do it on one leg. That's not a reason not to do the stuff. Uh, if you don't like an exercise, there's always something else that you can do that's more enjoyable. Pick it, tell them, tell me what their favorite exercise is. Dance. Dancing? That's great. You should be up here dancing. <laughs> Another exercise. Yoga. Yoga is great. That's a type of exercise. That's, that's a, but that's, that is a great exercise. Were you going to say something? The pool. The pool. Okay, the pool is great too. Less weight in the pool. You actually, it's all uh, positive motions. In a pool, you have positive, positive, or just positive, but there's no eccentric. Eccentric is like when you're slowing down like this, coming down. When you're swimming, it's just a positive motion. Positive. Positive. Eccentric is where you get more soreness from. Eccentric is uh, doing like the negative of a curl. If it just came all the way back up by itself and you just did the negative, that's eccentric movement. That requires more muscle fibers. I, I do that with a lot of people that are unable to get their arms up and hold them up. So I'll, I'll hold their arm up, I'll put something in their hand and say, just slowly bring it down. And then I'll bring, lift their arm back up and slowly bring it down. But there's so many different things like that that are really good for you when it comes to building a program. But if you don't exercise, the point of this whole thing is start. And starting starts with today. You know, if you, can, if you, if you can't get to the mailbox and back, go halfway. That means you could still get to the mailbox, you just wouldn't be able to come back. But pick something that's safe, something that you're able to do. And then push yourself, go a little bit further each time. You know, one of the biggest problems is you pay $20 to go to a gym. You go to the grocery store and you look for the closest parking to the front of the door. Walk way back there, walk to the door. I'll tell you what, you know, unless you're unable to make it other than from the closest spot, which means you have a handicap decal, for people with MS, the, big, the best tip that I have for you for the heat is park wherever you can find a tree. Because even if it's a little more energy to get where you're going and come back, when you get in that car, it's a difference between being in a 130 degree car, 140 degree car, and maybe an 80 degree car. That's a bit, because that's what used to happen to me. I'd, I learned that from my experiences. I'd get in a car, I'd be exhausted, my vision would go blurry, I'd say, well, my gosh, what did I do last? No, it's, it's that I'm sitting out in the sun in my car while it's baking. Um, I'll park at the end of the mall parking lot as far as you can go. If there's a tree over there, I'm delighted and I'll park there. The only problem is you better find someone to clean your car. Because <laughs> you got little animals living up in the tree. Any other questions? Yes. Are you uh, in Miami? Oh, right now I am. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do come to Miami occasionally to work with people, but not very often unless I had a large group of people that got together because it'd take me an hour to get here, an hour to get back, and then all the time in between, it becomes a three-hour session. So, but I do, I do come to Miami. I'm from Miami. I bleed 305. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All right, what's the most important exercise you're gonna do? The next one. <laughs> the next one, or the first one. Whoa. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it's important to do it. Don't tell everyone what you're going to do. Tell them what you did. All right? At the end of the day, you shouldn't be thinking about what you're going to do tomorrow that you didn't do today. You should be proud and talk to people and tell them, today, this is what I did. This is what I, I made myself do it. I actually enjoyed it. Because exercise doesn't have to be something that's not fun. It should be something that you enjoy. You should be in a setting that you're comfortable in. And you should want to come back the next time. That's what my job is. If I've never had someone that said, this isn't for me. Because if I gave them heavy loads of, extra, of, of, of equipment and told them to do this, that, and the other, and they're in pain, no one's going to want to come back. But if you make it fun, functional, and, and, you know, and they just enjoy it, then A, you're going to have a person walking out, out from wherever you are with a big smile, and everyone say, why are you smiling? No, I just exercise. That's just a strange thing, isn't it? You know, it's not that strange. So there's no age when you wake up one day and you say, today I'm too old to exercise. It doesn't happen like that. There's a day that you wake up and you say, gosh, if I had just been exercising for the past 10 years, I wouldn't be too stiff to do this. So don't give up on yourself. Believe in yourself. 
See yourself do it, and if you can see yourself do it, you're much more likely to actually do it. If you see yourself not doing something or, or failing, you're, you're, you've got no chance. Get back to the end of the line. Start over. But if you see it, seeing is believing, and then doing, and then talk about it, and then do more. All right? Thank you guys very much. <laughs>